My dearly beloved in Christ, typically for our Sunday sermon, I will take a quotation, a story, a sentence from the epistle or gospel and use it as the theme to draw a spiritual lesson. And I seldom make reference to the goings-on in the modern Catholic Church, what I would refer to as the Novus Ordo Church or the Conciliar Church. But this past week, there was a news item that caught my attention to such a point that I thought it would be very beneficial to give a sermon. And it was a message from Jorge Bergoglio, who calls himself Pope Francis, on Thursday, September 1st, which he had proclaimed to be a world day of prayer for creation. Now you're probably familiar with this, we had it in the reign of Mary, that a year ago, I think it was in May of 2015 or thereabouts, he came out with an encyclical on environmentalism. And one of the things he did was to declare this world day of prayer for creation. So I'd like to quote to you from his uh, sermon yesterday on this so-called World Day of Prayer for Creation and then comment on it. I won't, of course, quote the entire sermon, but sections. He repeatedly cited the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Constantinople who has, as he said, quote, courageously and prophetically continued to point out our sins against creation. Francis then went on to make a list of these so-called environmental sins, which include pollution, global warming, and deforestation. He said, for human beings to destroy the biological diversity of God's creation, to degrade the integrity of the earth by causing changes in its climate, to contaminate the earth's waters, its land, its air, and its life. These are sins. And I will come back to that. He went on to say that to commit a crime against the natural world is a sin against ourselves and a sin against God. The devastation, again I'm quoting, the devastation of the environment that God gave us it, God gave us a bountiful garden, but we have turned it into a polluted wasteland. He went on to say, quote, because of us, thousands of species will no longer give glory to God by their very existence, nor convey their message to us. We have no such right. Um, he went on to affirm he said he called upon believers to, quote, reaffirm their personal vocation to be stewards of creation. He says that this day of universal prayer furnishes an occasion to thank God for the gift of creation, to implore his help for its protection, and to beg his pardon for those sins committed against the world in which we live. He went on to say that during this year, he called upon everyone to, quote, let us learn to implore God's mercy for those sins against creation that we have not hitherto acknowledged and confessed. And finally, he said, let us repent of the harm we are doing to our common home. And if we have a true ecological conversion, this will lead to concrete ways of thinking, such as, quote, avoiding the use of plastic and paper, reducing water consumption, separating refuse, cooking only what can reasonably be consumed, showing care for other living beings, using public transport or carpooling, planting trees, turning off unnecessary lights, or any number of other practices. Now, I would say that last part, probably many of us already do much of that. We don't just leave lights on. You have to pay the electrical bill. But to bring this into a so-called, a supposed spiritual uh, 
level that someone is committing sin by doing these things. This is beyond the pale. And there are so many errors in here that one hardly knows where to start. First of all, to claim that there are sins against creation. Well, what about the sins against God? We don't hear about the Ten Commandments anymore from him. You don't hear condemnations, or at least very seldom and somewhat muted, condemnations of abortion, divorce and remarriage, contraception, sins against nature. Very seldom are these even mentioned. He even had a professed homosexual be the lector for his mass last year in Yankee Stadium when he was in New York a year ago a known professed homosexual. So you don't hear condemnation of those kind of sins, of real sins. So now there are these supposed sins against nature, these new sins that he has come up with that have replaced the real sins. We also find in this, this overemphasis on the planet and, and environment and taking care of it is de-emphasizing what really matters and that is that this earth is not our home. We are like travelers or wayfarers, pilgrims, going through life, and our goal is heaven. And we were not made by God to live here forever. Furthermore, this planet, nature, is, we might say, wild and difficult to control. And that would be because of original sin, not because of human, man-made, global, supposed global warming. In fact, much of the, the cycles that take place between warmer years and cooler years, much of it has to do with sunspots and the activity on the sun and has nothing to do with man. In fact, these global elites that constantly push this notion of man-made uh, climate, man uh, climate problems, they make the assumption that it is from man-made activity, which has never been proven. And I would contend that that's not the case at all. But rather, as I said, it's a result of other factors such as activity on the sun, etc. And there have always been these cycles. There have always been hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and volcanoes and flooding and droughts and down torrential downpours, etc. And that's not a result of man-made uh, situations, but rather a result of the fact that original sin distorted the beautiful creation God made. Original sin has thrown things off kilter, and there are these environmental problems. And I would even go, go farther to say that we, at this point in the year 2016, are far more advanced than let's say 100 or 150 years ago, when there were mining practices, for example, that created toxins that people were not aware of. It was not the level of scientific understanding. You remember in the 1970s when we all had to convert from, un from leaded gasoline to unleaded gasoline, which helped the air reduce pollution incredibly by a very large amount. Um, other things could be cited. We didn't know a hundred years ago the danger of asbestos and other certain things that were used in manufacturing and building homes. Now we know that. There have been these changes made. They've produced plants, coal-burning plants that can burn coal efficiently and safely and cleanly. So there's been a tremendous amount of progress in that regard. And what I find really amusing, if not right, downright disturbing, is that these global elites who constantly push the notion of man-made global warming, they're constantly buzzing around the planet in their private jets burning tons of carbon fuels. So what hypocrisy. And I also read this recently that scientists are now concerned in the next couple years that there's going to be global cooling. So the point here is that we are not completely in control of this planet and of the forces of nature. Nature is violent. 
There will continue to be hurricanes and earthquakes and volcanoes and tornadoes and so on and so forth, regardless of what man does or doesn't do. And so it's a sort of hubris to think that we are in control and by certain practices, stop using plastic or carpooling, you're going to prevent the next hurricane. It's nonsense. But what really bothers me is that they're bringing this, the so-called Pope is bringing this into a spiritual plane, trying to make people feel guilty about driving their automobile or using plastic or turning on a light bulb or whatever it may be, that that's somehow a sin. And what's interesting here is if you eliminate the real sins, the Ten Commandments, which you hardly hear of anymore, if you eliminate those sins, then you have to create other sins to take their place. If you eliminate the worship of God, which to a great degree they have done by destroying the holy sacrifice of the Mass in the modern church, then you were going to replace it with something, someone or something. And now there is a sort of worship of the earth. There's even a, a televised Mass in Toronto, Canada, every Sunday, and they have a hymn to Gaia, the goddess, the pagan earth goddess Gaia, and they actually sing a hymn on this, and this is supposedly a Catholic mass that is televised publicly on Sundays. So you eliminate the worship of the true God, you eliminate the knowledge of the true commandments, you're going to substitute something in its place. The vacuum has to be filled. And this nonsense of this speech that he gave on Thursday shows how far they have gone away from an understanding of true Catholicism, true Christianity, the proper worship of God, the obedience to his Ten Commandments. So I thought it would be beneficial to bring this in so that we could all see how far they have gone off kilter. I've often thought of this. Catholics who continue to go to their Novus Ordo church attend the Novus Ordo, they're hearing sermons Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And what happens? Their thinking changes. I'm sure you've seen these polls that are taken that 70, 80% of Catholics, self-professed Catholics who still go to church say that they believe that artificial contraception is fine. They practice it. They have no qualms. They know that it's not an official church teaching, but that doesn't bother them, etc. You can read these polls, large numbers of people who no longer believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, for example. Well, if you go to church Sunday after Sunday, you receive the host in your hand, you're standing, and the host is given out by anybody and everybody, lay ministers, there's no longer a sense of reverence, and they've lost their belief in the real presence. So I thought it would be good to bring this out because those of us who have been out of the modern church, the Novus Ordo Church, for some of you more than 40 years, to realize the people who still go and they hear these sermons Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, their thinking changes. And I'm sure that you have all experienced this with your relatives. If you have relatives that are practicing Novus Ordo Catholics, you'll find that their thinking has changed over time, not overnight. But over time, Father Michael Oswalt, and I'm sure many of you have listened to his explanation for when he left Novus Ordo, he was ordained in the Novus Ordo and was a priest in the Novus Ordo for less than a year. But he found when he would give sermons, he would use traditional Catholic books and he would quote from St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Francis de Sales and St. John Marie Vianney, etc. And really prepare his sermons. People would get angry. And he got called on the carpet by the pastor several times. And all he would do is say, here's the sermon. Read it and tell me where I'm wrong. And then the pastor would drop it because he wrote them out and it was all quotations from Catholic church teaching and the saints, etc. But I find that interesting. He said the people would get angry and complain to the bishop or to the, pre, the main pastor of that church, etc., for his sermons. Why? Because their thinking has changed. They're no longer Catholic. 
They've imbibed a new religion, a new religion which places environmentalism in place of the worship of God. But no, we are in a fallen state, and it doesn't matter what anyone does. There still will be fluctuations in nature. There still will be uh, catastrophes, because this is not a perfect world. God created us for heaven. And let us especially remember that and never forget the importance of God's, the true commandments, the Ten Commandments, observing them and worshiping God as he wishes to be worshiped. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.